Legendary musicians, iconic actors, elite athletes, and politicians are among the famous faces of Parkinson's disease. These are their stories. Perhaps the most visible public face of Parkinson's is Michael J. Fox. He is, of course, beloved for starring in the Back to the Future movies and on the sitcoms Family Ties and Spin City. When Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's, he'd recently gotten married and hadn't even yet turned 30. As he recalled during a CBS Mornings interview in 2021, uh, We haven't cried about Parkinson's since. We've just dealt with it and lived our lives, but we cried about it that first time. Fox has continued to act for decades despite his diagnosis, on the likes of such TV shows as Boston Legal and The Good Wife. He's since retired and occasionally has difficulty dealing with everyday activities, some of which require a wheelchair. He's also written four books, and he appreciates the time he gets to spend with his wife and children. And while his disease can be debilitating, he doesn't let Parkinson's get him down, and he's even dubbed himself Mr. Optimist. One of the greatest boxers of all time, Muhammad Ali was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 1984, three years after he retired from the sport, although he'd been showing signs of the disease as early as the late 1970s. A research study conducted by Ali biographer Jonathan Eig revealed that he experienced speech discrepancies between the ages of 26 and 39, a symptom that can be attributed to Parkinson's. Unfortunately, Ali kept boxing even though he was experiencing some troubling issues with his health. Traumatic brain injury is one of the things that can also lead to Parkinson's disease, and the boxer certainly experienced his fair share of headshots during his career. He passed away in 2016 at the age of 74 from septic shock. In 2018, Sweet Caroline singer-songwriter Neil Diamond revealed his diagnosis of Parkinson's. He then retired from touring, but continued to perform occasionally. In a 2020 interview with the Associated Press, he explained that he was feeling pretty good and made sure to stay fit and take the proper medications. And while he couldn't travel like he did in the past, he vowed to stay active. As he put it, I'm feeling good and I feel very positive about it. I'm feeling better every day. I'm just dealing with it as best I can and just keep the music coming. In 2020, the singer released the album Classic Diamonds, which featured rearrangements of some of his hit songs. Fortunately for Diamond, the disease hasn't affected his voice. He even told Parade Magazine in 2021, In a strange way, I think I'm singing better than ever. He believed that this was likely because he wasn't touring anymore and thus overworking his voice. He also admitted that he tried not to think about the emotional side effects of the diagnosis, as he noted, I don't deal with it. I think I'm in denial or something. I feel fine. Rock star Ozzy Osbourne was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2019, but he didn't let it change his outlook on life. He's even continued to release new music. As he revealed during an interview on Good Morning America, he fell after performing on New Year's Eve in 2019, then had neck surgery and had to cope with some nerve issues. Since then, he's discovered that Parkinson's can be very challenging to cope with, as he can have good days coinciding with really bad ones. What do you want Ozzy's fans to know? I just hope they hung out and there for me because I need them. After surgery, Osborne felt numb and his legs got cold. He decided to open up publicly about his diagnosis because he was struggling to walk and didn't like to keep secrets from his fans. His wife Sharon and his kids all rallied around him, and the family found themselves closer than ever. Still, it's been a struggle for Osborne, who didn't like to sit around while he saw his family being productive. He still manages to keep active as he, Sharon, and his son Jack all star on the Travel Channel series The Osbournes Want to Believe. In 2018, when he was 82 years old, MASH star Alan Alda revealed that he'd been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease three and a half years earlier. His cheery attitude has kept him from wallowing in self-pity, and he's remained busy in front of the camera. He decided to go public with the news because he was afraid someone would spot the symptoms. As he put it during an appearance on CBS Mornings, It's probably only a matter of time before somebody does a story about this right. from a right. sad point of view, but so this that's is not where I am. While promoting his new podcast, Alda noticed that his thumb was twitching a little, which he feared people would notice. So rather than let someone else speculate about his health, he decided to reveal the truth. Alda is counteracting the disease by playing tennis and boxing several times a week. He also marches to John Philip Sousa's music. The disease affects everyone a little differently, which Alda realizes, as he experiences both his good days and his bad days. You know how I look at it? It's like a puzzle to be solved. Mm -hmm. What do I have to adapt to to carry on a normal life? Late actor Bob Hoskins is probably best known for playing Detective Eddie Valiant in 1988's Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He started acting in the late 60s and racked up plenty of stage and screen credits over the course of his decades-long career, including such films as Mermaids and Super Mario Brothers. Hoskins also dealt with mental health issues, including depression and a nervous breakdown after divorcing his first wife. And in 2012, it was revealed that he'd been diagnosed with Parkinson's. His last on-screen role was a dwarf in that same year's Snow White and the Huntsman. 
He then immediately retired from acting following his diagnosis, and he remained out of the public eye until his death two years later from pneumonia. He remains beloved for playing tough guys, while also being able to show off his softer side. Maurice White was the co-lead singer of Earth, Wind & Fire, the R&B band behind such iconic hits as September, Shining Star, and Boogie Wonderland. White began showing symptoms of Parkinson's disease in the 1980s, and he revealed his diagnosis in 2000 during the group's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction. He managed to function for many years while living with the disease. He continued to perform with his band until 1995, after which it became too difficult for him to tour. White founded Earth, Wind & Fire in the late 1960s. Born in Memphis, he attended the Chicago Conservancy, worked with blues musician Muddy Waters, and played as a session drummer. He was also a producer and collaborated with other musicians such as Barbra Streisand and Cher. White loved entertaining his fans, and he also strove to inspire them, as he told the Associated Press in 2000. That was the whole objective, to try to inspire young people to believe in themselves and to follow through on their ideas. White died in 2016 at his home in Los Angeles at the age of 74. Singer Linda Ronstadt learned that she was dealing with a Parkinson's-like disease a little while after she started having problems with her voice in 2000. She can no longer sing because it requires repetitive motion, which she can't sustain. In 2009, she played her last show, which took place in San Antonio, Texas. As she revealed to CNN in 2019, she had a tough time hearing part of her voice nearly two decades earlier, and she initially believed that there was a problem with her headphones. Then her voice started to seize up, and she knew that something was wrong. Doctors initially diagnosed Ronstadt with Parkinson's. But then a year later, they determined she actually had progressive supranuclear palsy, which is similar to Parkinson's and has no cure. Everyday activities have become difficult for Ronstadt, including showering, brushing her teeth, and even eating. Still, she finds creative ways to carry on, and in 2013, she released the memoir Simple Dreams, which chronicles her career. You know, I think I'm lucky, and I've had a good long life. Scottish actor and comedian Billy Connolly discontinued his live performances in 2018, five years after he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. During his final live tour, he would point out his symptoms to his fans prior to performing, presumably to make them comfortable and ward off any awkwardness. He continued to entertain TV audiences through 2021, even though it was becoming a struggle. During an interview with his wife Pamela Stevenson at the Edinburgh TV Festival that August, during which he received a Lifetime Achievement Award, he revealed, "...the challenges lately have been medical. They are getting worse." Connolly also noted that because he was struggling with Parkinson's, it was unclear how much longer he would continue to book TV shows. As he put it, "...I will have to weigh it up and see how bad it gets, play it by ear." Over the course of his career, Connolly has appeared in such memorable movies as Brave, Fido, and both Boondock Saints films. Southern Baptist evangelist and minister Billy Graham started experiencing the symptoms of Parkinson's in 1989 and revealed the news publicly three years later. He managed to continue preaching for many years following his diagnosis, even though he had problems walking and was experiencing mild tremors. It was also difficult for him to write and navigate stairs. Despite his diagnosis, Graham was committed to continue writing and participating in Christian crusades, albeit at a slower pace. Graham started hosting revival gatherings in the 1940s and popularized evangelical Christian Christianity. Many American presidents of both major political parties leaned on him as a spiritual advisor over the span of several decades. He also preached to millions of people in 185 countries. In addition to Parkinson's, Graham also suffered from prostate cancer and hydrocephalus. It's not uncommon for some people with Parkinson's to live long lives, and Graham was no exception. He died in his sleep at the age of 99 in 2018. I know that my time is limited on this earth. But I have tremendous hope in the fact I'll be in the future life. Some public figures wait a while before deciding to publicly reveal a Parkinson's diagnosis, and Reverend Jesse Jackson was one of them. He found out that he had the medical condition in 2015, but he didn't reveal the news until 2017. The political and social activist was in denial about the disease, which his father also had, but he was eventually forced to seek medical help after noticing some telltale symptoms. As he revealed in a statement, "...after a battery of tests, my physicians identified the issue as Parkinson's disease, a disease that bested my father. Recognition of the effects of this disease on me has been painful, and I have been slow to grasp the gravity of it." Progress kind of grows and diminishes you." Jackson has since tried to remain positive about his condition, bowing to slow its progression through physical therapy and other activities. As a minister, activist, and politician, he spent his life dedicated to fighting for justice and equality. One of the most prominent ways he's done so is by founding the Rainbow Push Coalition, a human and civil rights organization. 
He wasn't the biggest name in basketball, but over the course of his 12 seasons, former NBA player Brian Grant played alongside and against several legends of the game. After retiring, he wrote about living with Parkinson's in his 2021 book Rebound, Soaring in the NBA, Battling Parkinson's, and Finding What Really Matters. During his final year in the NBA, he collapsed while attempting a layup. His gut told him that something was seriously wrong. Soon after, he mentioned to a friend that he had an uncontrollable hand twitch. His friend was convinced that Grant had Parkinson's, with a diagnosis from specialists confirming that suspicion. Grant initially felt depressed about the situation and started self-medicating with pills and alcohol. He also spent a lot of time by himself in his bedroom, but he managed to pick himself up and is now an advocate for Parkinson's awareness. He's also head of the Brian Grant Foundation, which focuses on helping people cope with the condition. 